Melissa Borja from Indianapolis. She's an assistant professor at the University of Michigan and a researcher for the Stop AAPI Hate, which monitors hate crimes against Asian Americans. Good to have you on the program with us, Melissa. In 2020, reported hate crimes against Asian Americans were up 150 percent, with women reportedly targeted more than two times um, the rate of men. What's behind this? There is a really deep and long history of violence against women in the United States and in the broader world. And in addition, we are seeing uh, the latest, latest iteration of violence against Asian Americans. This also has a long history and has only worsened during the pandemic as Asian American people have been scapegoated for the coronavirus. You know, I think a lot of people were uh, horrified, of course, by the attack in Atlanta, but not necessarily surprised. I see a lot of my friends on Facebook and Twitter post about other hate crimes uh, against Asians. But it's not something that we really see too much about in the news. For example, last summer we saw all the widespread protests in support of the Black Lives Matter uh, movement. But we don't see protests when something like this happens in support of um, Asian Americans. Why is that? Well, part of it is that Asian Americans have historically been an overlooked racial minority in the United States. And as Asian Americans have grown in number and in political prominence, more people have been paying attention. Asian Americans are also taking the lead in calling attention to their troubles. And one thing we're working on is not just making sure mainstream America knows that we're suffering, but we're encouraging Asian Americans to report incidents of hate against them and to take a stand. But oftentimes, uh, violence against Asian Americans is underreported and even downplayed by law enforcement, because we know that uh, a hate crime um, carries an extra charge um, with it, but it's often not actually a crime, is not often charged as a hate crime. Why, why do you think that is? Well, I think the framing and the focus on hate crimes is a little problematic. One thing we do know is that there are a lot of expressions of racism that Asian Americans experience today. Hate crimes and the violence that we saw in Atlanta is an extreme example, but there are other forms of racism that Asian Americans experience that undermine their well-being and do harm to them. So even if a, a person yelling a racist slur while someone is going grocery shopping is not technically a hate crime, that does increase Asian Americans, especially Asian American women's feeling of fear you talked about uh, the long um, history of racism against Asian Americans. And, and while we did see an increase in it over the last year, a lot of people have blamed uh, President Trump and the language he used when talking about China and the coronavirus. Do you think that he really is to blame for the increase or does he just make it more acceptable for this type of behavior that people have? Or it's seemingly acceptable, I should say. It is, of course, not acceptable. We know that anti-Asian racism and the fact that Asian American people can be blamed and scapegoated for problems is not a new phenomenon in the United States. And part of my work as a scholar is to point to the deep standing uh, histories of that. However, politicians like Donald Trump and there are many others who have used the same stigmatizing rhetoric that harms Asian Americans need to be more responsible and aware of the harm that they're doing by using terms that blame Asian American people for the coronavirus. You know, it was just five days before this attack in Atlanta that President Joe Biden said that hate crimes against Asian Americans is un-American and must stop. So, I mean, what needs to happen? What needs to change? Well, Stop AAPI Hate always emphasizes the call for support, resources, and education. Not necessarily more policing, but making sure communities that are vulnerable know how to get support, know how to prevent these incidents, and more broadly, making sure that all Americans understand that Asian Americans are not a threat, Asian Americans are part of the fabric of American life and that there is no place for hate in our country. We all deserve to live in communities that are safe and inclusive. Asian Americans have always insisted on this. And I think it's important for us to recognize that there is a deep history of Asian Americans standing for justice. All right. We'll leave it there. Melissa Borja, thank you so much for your time today.